change. <laughs> Imagine somebody else has gone to the lighthouse and got whatever the fuck he's left outside. He said he was going to leave it, so I don't think he's like around around. I actually believe Pred, that's the thing. Like I genuinely believe that he won that in court. What the fuck happened to my car? Bro. Not the song I had in mind. I got him. Don't worry. I got him. That's a bad omen.
No more in there. What is this? Just take the pages, Richard. I thought we had an arrangement. And you said this is Balto's fault. Anything else? That will be all, Richard.
Fuck. Page 11 of 15. I have tried to keep a baseline respect for the living. To respect the dead and the weight of their deaths. For a long time, I have held the, the dead over the living for leverage. Bringing back souls when they should not have been. To use them for deals, only to watch more die, including them. That has changed now. It was cruel. Admittedly, knowingly cruel. Disrespecting the sanctity of death. It went against what I should have stood for them for then. I had gone against death's own wishes. It is part of the reason I am being removed, understandably. Removed? Those who have maintained this idea will always garner a ground level of respect and understanding from me now. Understanding the weight and value of one's life is, after all, the whole point of my work in the first place. After realising my purpose so long ago, it gave way to thinking about why it seemed to mean so much to me after so long. My parents had done horrible things to Isaac and I as children. And they never once thought about anything bad was going to happen to them for it. Not only did they give no thought to their children's lives, but did not value their own. A disregard for the consequences. Consequences. My entire adult life, I watch people disregard the life they had been given, throw away the lives around them. They had lost sight of the extreme weight of a death. They had forgotten to give their life meaning. Especially the people of San Andreas. Pathetic. You toil away your sad existence every day in pursuit of meaningless material objects. Tearing down the people around you, you hoard the things you acquire. Step on anyone who may be in your way. And what has it got on you? A false sense of security? A faint fog of what happiness is meant to be? You are clowns with sad faces painted in tears and blood. You perform every day to keep yourself entertained. You press on, wasting away, hoping that you eventually... You eventually, the fresh tears, the frown and the drying blood will mean something. That your act will convince not only the people around you, but yourself that you are the one doing it right. It will not change that way. That is not true for all of you, however. There are some of you who understand. Some who put it on an act, but underneath realize their position in it all. Some who try hard to make it worth something, but become lost. Some who actually manage to spend their time, time living wisely. This number is increasingly lowered constantly. I've questioned myself if I too have lived a life that was purposeful or that it had meaning to it. Parts of that question are difficult to answer for me. The lack of emotion blurs what would normally be clear for most humans, I think. Though I do think that how I lived, the things I did had meaning. Not only for myself, but the ripples it sent out to everyone involved, everyone affected even now as I write this, as people talk and go about their day just with the knowledge that I exist looming over their shoulder, it gave my existence meaning. It gives their existence meaning in a way. It forces these people to face what they would normally avoid in any way possible. It makes them think of their loved ones, consider who is most important. It makes the evil more wicked, the good into proverbial heroes. Above all else, it forces people to answer the question. What will I do when faced with death? The answer to that question is always entertaining. Sometimes it is poorly answered. Sometimes some meet it with laughter. Some meet it with sadness. Some meet me with kindness. Some, a lot, meet me with anger. Though on occasion, that is my fault. 
Regardless, the answer to the question is not just entertainment. Oh, thank God. I'm good. It's, uh, I think this might be what Matt was doing the other day. What do you, the journal? Yeah. Well, Glorion did mention that they had found page three. Yeah, well, Norman just handed me three pages. <sighs> and what are you supposed to do with those? I think he wants me to get with the other people. Put the pages together. This is exactly... happening all over again. There is another option. I can say no. I don't think I have a choice in doing that. But if I'm honest... Uh, feels different this doesn't feel like a I don't want to drag you into this it doesn't feel like a Norman Bones game
This feels different. This feels like uh Feels like a goodbye. A good okay. What from here? This feels like Norman saying goodbye. But he's death. Death doesn't die. I don't think... Norman died nine years ago, Edza. He hasn't been death for that long. Who was death before I... Norman? But that's what I'm saying. If Norman's already dead, then... No, but what I'm saying is... I don't think... I don't think it's going to be Norman anymore. I think Norman's time is up. So he's looking for another host? Yeah. And that doesn't concern you at all? No, because I'm not going to be volunteering. And to use his words that he just spoke to you what if you don't have a choice five years ago Norman told us that he went into a room with death and only he walked out if he was telling the truth that means that becoming death is a choice. But you have to want it. And so you're telling me that if you go into a room with the other people who are currently involved, you can honestly tell me right the second that you wouldn't volunteer yourself so they wouldn't? Because I know you, and like your son, you are also brave and selfless. I'm going to die in my bed, laying next to my husband, surrounded by my family and my grandkids with a pint of Penn and Jerry's and with Downton Abbey blasting on the TV. You promise? I promise. Okay. 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 I know. And Matt is going to be so angry. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's going to be like, well, if you can do it, why can't I? I know. I'm going to sleep on it. I don't know what I'm going to okay. do yet. I'm going to sleep on it. Okay. Okay. All right. Love you. I love you too. Bye. Bye.